Welcome to Meet the Streets, a podcast for street photographers, by a street photographer, and about street photography. In today's episode, we're going to meet Adria Ellis, an outstanding street photographer currently based in Brooklyn, New York. Check in on Wednesdays, or we'll meet another street photographer from somewhere in the world. Adria, thank you so much for coming on and, and uh, allowing me to interview you on uh, my uh, new podcast, Meet the Streets. Uh, so. Yeah. I know about you, but please tell everybody else. Give uh, so a little something, a little background. Okay, I will. I will give the um, the snapshot of a very long photographic background, which is Excellent. that. Um, I don't know. It sounds kind of silly to say I've always been a photographer, but um, yeah. When my parents had a Polaroid and I was ten, I would get in trouble for using all the film, and. Um, I would take pictures of everything and I loved it. And so I really, I started taking photographs and I loved photography when I was really, you know, so young and, um, and I loved it. It was, it was what I really enjoyed doing. I came from a family of artists and my mom, my sister, my grandparents, my great grandmother, all of them were painters and just painters or they would draw or my sister does illustration and I 100% do not have that skill. And um, so when I realized that I could take a photograph and then it looked like what I was seeing, I was like, ah, this, this works. I can do this. So, you know, it's, it started when I was young and you can uh, fast forward. Then I did, you know, I did photography in high school and then I'm adding this because of where you are. I did terrible in school. I hated school and hmm. it's not fun and um I had terrible learning disabilities it was just it was not a fun thing and so when I graduated my parents said what do you want to do you made it I think it was as painful for my parents as it was for me <laughs> and um and they said what do you want to do and I said I want to live in Paris and wow. I was 18 years old and I moved to Paris by myself that's amazing so and that was when like my travel photography really began and I was 18 and I've traveled all over Europe and I was, I was ambitious and I was very um, curious and adventurous. I, mm -hmm. um, I can say one of the more exciting photographic things that happened in my life, which sounds kind of funny, but it really, when I look back at it, I think it's true, but I was, it was 1989 and 90 and I lived in Paris and it was when the Berlin wall came down. Yeah. And I saw on the news that day that the Berlin Wall was going to come down. And the next morning I went straight to the airport, bought a ticket. I spent wow. the first, you know, I was there within, I think, 12 hours of when they opened Checkpoint Charlie and Brandenburg Gate. And wow. again, I was 18. I was so, you know. Well, again, and, that's pretty, that's pretty yeah. ambitious for a, uh, for an 18 year old American to, uh, yeah. to, to go, yeah. okay, I'm in Paris history is being made another country over let me hop on yeah. a plane and go see this well most people would yeah. at best go eh or uh yeah. or read about yeah. it in the paper watch it on the news and then drink yeah. some more wine yeah yeah exactly so so it really like that's when it that's how long i have i have had this and then it kind of swayed it, it it i had other parts of my life come and go but then eventually after three years of college, I decided I wanted to go to Brooks Institute of Photography right. and I went to Brooks. And so my, my degree and my education is in photography. It is what I have oh. done. It is, I, I've always felt really lucky about the timing for my education because let's see, I graduated in 80, no, 96, I guess, 95, 96, yeah. somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And right when I graduated there was the very first scanner that was like, that was the Nikon cool pick scanner, I think, where I you remember. could actually scan a negative and get it on, you know, a screen and use Photoshop. And mm -hmm. then I can, I can actually say that my, um, uh, my graduation project for Brooks Institute was the first, the first series of images that they had ever had that were printed via computer. Wow. And I did, you know, iris prints. And um, so it was, it was so good because all of my education was on film, you know, right. film, dark rooms, learning to shoot zone, printing black and white, printing color, printing. I mean, it was the most intensive photographic education available. So, mm -hmm. um, 
So I have that now. And then to fast forward to now, um, I've been shooting with my iPhone 100% for 12 years. Yeah, so, I, again, that's something I definitely wanted to get into. I've gone, uh, you know, from here to ab- here. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And again, what you do with that iPhone is insane. Like, I I, I definitely want to get into that. I, that's, yeah. I'm blown away. I remember having been following you for a while. Yeah, yeah. When I, when I finally, I, the first time I heard you say something, or read you saying something about yeah. using an iPhone, I'm like, no way. I, yeah. you, no. no. And then I'm looking through. The, I try again, not to even say it anymore. I'd... Well, yeah. Again, and this is your again your proof. Your 100 percent proof. It is not the the tool that you photograph with. It's who is using the tool. Yeah. You're I'm like it's seriously. I and I was looking. At, I know this. I knew this coming in. And I was looking at your work again today, and I'm like, how is this possible that this is an iPhone? Because again, I, I hate using my phone for pictures. Like I, the only, I it, it's painful to me. Like I just. I use it as a recording tool just to remember something or to come back. Yeah. It's again, it's like a Polaroid back in the day. Yeah. yeah. And then I, again, if I don't have my camera on me, like my actual, like official camera, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I don't have anything. I'm forgetting that I actually have an expensive camera in my pocket, which sometimes can make a phone call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's very but, true. Yeah. It is. Are, um. I think the things that make the biggest difference for it, there's um, there's a whole variety of things I can say about that. I can say for sure there's um, there's a lot of there's a lot of shots I'm not going to get. I just did a really big trip with my parents to India, and yeah. we went we went to go see the leopards. I'm not going to get a good shot of the leopard, <laughs> like. Mm. I, you know, well, but most I'm not a wildlife photographer. Aren't. If I was a wildlife photographer <laughs> and mm-hmm. if I was going on a safari in Africa or I was, you know, a landscape photographer, then I would have a different tool. Or, but, you, or you, get a, you, you get some kind of clip on lens for the iPhone that had a, an extender. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I have tried them. That's too much for me, even. That's, mm-hmm. that's way too much gear, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But um, any it, I shoot according to my gear, kind of. But it's what I like to shoot, and I and I really started becoming, you know, much more of a street photographer. And I think that that technically speaking, um, I listened to it. I loved your interview with Nancy. It was Nancy, right? Uh, Amy. 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 Uh, Amy. Last week. Yeah. Yeah, Amy. See, oh, Amy. Gosh. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> well, I loved your interview with her, and I love that she was like she's specific that she does portraits. And I always describe myself as a street photographer, but then if you are like literally looking at the definition of street photographer, I'm really not a street photographer. I, I get I shoot some street photography by the definition of the word, but um, I do a ton of portraits, mm. and really what I'm doing is documenting. I'm doc. I'm a documentarian. Mm. I think that's what I really am. And, think, and yeah. a ton of portraits. Tons. Yeah. And again, the idea of street photography is so loosely defined and there's so many seeming subgenres of it. So, mm-hmm. and, and if you think about it, uh, street photography and documentary photography are, are cousins. So it comes down to the, really the, with street photography, the only thing that seems to differentiate it from uh documentary is that there's no specific purpose when you're going out like you you're 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 pretty much capturing whatever you fancy yeah. whereas like, there's yeah. no beginning there's no middle and there's no end it's just all yeah. yeah basically some very cool visual noise that just constantly yeah. comes at you and so yeah. yeah you know you don't turn it off it's like the uh it just i guess like a musician yeah it just kind of just it it floods you and you just constantly capture it and then uh and that's that so but and it, yeah. if you decide within all that you can well let's see what i do because i think that's how your style comes about i think if yeah. you after after you've done this for a while as opposed to you going ah oh, i want my style to be this the mm-hmm. more more correctly i think you just look at your body of work from point a to point b and yeah. see what the threads are and go apparently that's my style that's yeah. what speaks to me. And that's, yeah. so that's, yeah, I can, your style, you are, you're a documentarian, you're a street photographer, you love portraits. Again, it, yeah. doesn't, there, it doesn't really need to be all these specific no. labels. 
Yeah. It- and I think because of my education too, I shoot everything, you know, and, but now my gear and my, my, what happened was that actually when I got out of school, this was a little sad. Um, when I got out of school, my education ruined me. It, it mm. destroyed me. Like it really did, which uh, it didn't, it didn't do that to everybody, but, um, but it did it to me because I was in a school that was so science-based and so technically based that if I didn't have a brick of slide film that I had tested and knew exactly what ISO to set it at, mm-hmm. well, then why would I go shoot? Literally, Liter- like literally, <laughs> that's what I, that, mm-hmm. that's what I was, that's where I got to. And if I didn't have two lenses and my tripod, and if I hadn't, you know, done research of where I was going to be and wasn't going to be there, you know, an hour before dawn to get my shot, then why would you go shoot a sunrise? Like, why would you do it? There's no point in it, you know? And Mm. so I just, I got into a system where everything was so incredibly technically based and, um, and it wasn't fun anymore. I didn't have fun. It was stressful and it was, and it was, you know, a burden and I, I stopped enjoying it. And so since, so I, I stopped, I stopped doing any sort of photography for over well over 10 years. Wow. And, um, and I didn't start shooting again consistently until the first iPhone came out. Wow. And when the first iPhone came out, I started taking pictures manically. And wow. I, and I, I and I, sorry to and overuse I the do. word wow, but <laughs> yeah, I, 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 and I still do, you know, but it became fun again. And so for me, what it's been, what it's always been about now, well, always what it's been about for me for the last 15 years was I, I have such an incredible love of, of taking photographs and being on the streets and, and being a photographer. It, it is, it is so what I love. And so the most important thing is, is that I don't ruin that. <laughs> Because it's hard. It's hard. I'm so, I feel so lucky to have that. I mean, I know tons of people that don't have like a driving passion in their life or they don't have a, they don't have something that, that, um, that they want to put creative energy into or drive in. And it's, <clears throat> I feel like it's a gift to just have that. I totally. hundred you know, percent agree. Just, I mean, you know, because I know how much you get out and shoot and mm-hmm. I know how, I know that that camera is always around your neck every time you're on those, on the streets. I know it. There's yeah. no question in my mind. And that is a gift. Like, yeah. It's yeah. A gift to have that. And I, so I, I feel I, the goal is not to ruin it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's the, again, to your point is going out and doing things that you want to do because you want to do them, not because somebody's paying you, not because somebody's making a request of you. If those yeah. two things line up, Excellent. Yeah. But that's how I got into street photography. I just got tired. I, I, I mean, again, doing this prof- well, a professional photographer for like 28 years. Mm-hmm. So at a certain point, even though I just enjoy doing it all the time. So it wasn't really like hard to me. It wasn't hard work. Even if I'm I got my assistants lugging gear and I'm sweating and yeah. we're, we're, I'm at wherever we yeah. are, I still enjoyed it. But at a yeah. certain point, you just go, well, hold on. I don't have a hobby. <laughs> Yeah. My my, yeah. my hobby is this, and I yeah. I spend so much time. So <clears> I, <throat> I started uh, photographing. I started just simply shooting stuff in the street because I always liked it, and and yeah. it's new and like, exactly like you. Again, I I, I feel a pity. I, let me not say pity. I feel bad for anybody in the world, and there's plenty of them that don't have something that they can actually just kind of fall back on and just feel good about. Whether it's, I mean, I think that we're, I think that we're the minority in that. I think that that's, it it is. I think that it's, I mean, I really, I, I think it's, I see it like as a precious gift. And, um, cause I do, I know, I know so many people that, that are like, well, I'll try this or I'll try that. Or I wish I could do this. Or I thought, you know, and, Mm -hmm. um, I have a very good friend here, Lori Hillsberg. It's a great photographer. And her and I just talk about it all the time. And she's like, I'm so grateful that, that I'm so happy to just go out and take photographs every day. 
and and, and Amy, Amy, Amy was the yeah. same. She was just like, I'm never bored. I'll just go out and go take photographs. You know, walk well, down. Or, you're in New York now. You can go look her up. Like New York is just yeah. overrun. I, you know what? I want. I absolutely want to. I was. That's exactly what I was thinking when I when I watched the interview. So, so what this all what this all kind of leads to now is that I tried so many different things once I started doing photography again, which was about. Well, it's kind of been a while now. It's been about 15 years since I was like, okay, this is what my this is what I'm going to do, right. and. And in that gap, this these two these two pieces kind of come together. So I have to like just throw this in there. Um, so I graduated from Brooks Institute of Photography. I came to New York to be a photographer. I hated it. I hated it. I hated the stress. I hated the. I hated that there was no creativity in it. I hated the scene. I didn't enjoy. I didn't like any of it. And I randomly started going to yoga with my sister. And then my yoga teacher said, "You should be a yoga teacher." And I was like. Okay. And so then I did no photography and I taught yoga for 15 years and opened a yoga studio and had an entirely different life that was wow. completely spiritually based and yoga based. So anyways, that's, that's on the side now. And so when I started trying to find new ways to bring photography into my life, I mean, it was just like, as my dad would say, swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss, swing and miss. And then I, I had a friend going to Cuba and I was like, gosh, I've always wanted to take photographs there. So I decided to go to Havana and I went once and I was like, oh, this is good. I went back like a month later. I'm like, oh, this is even better. And I'm like, I'm going to bring people to Cuba. I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. And I don't speak any Spanish. I still don't. And um, obviously now I know a ton about Cuban history and, and life in Cuba and culture. And I you know, I've been doing that since 2016. So there's now, now I know, but at the time I didn't know anything, but, um, it was fun. And it was how, fun I, and I loved I still it. Remember, that's awesome. I'm sorry. I don't mean yeah. to talk over you. So please. No, no, no. So I, I still remember the first time I, I, I noticed your feed. Uh, it was, it was like some 24 hour, uh, project and you were in Cuba. You were in Havana. Hour in Havana. And yeah. uh and yeah, so your sister where you do like one you post a picture every hour for 24 hours. Yep. And I saw I saw your uh, whatever picture you put up at the time, and then I start the next one and the next one. I'm like, oh my God, like this is so cool. And then uh yeah, yeah and then it was, yeah, like everybody that does that when if, I, if I'm following it, I never first of all stay up for 24 hours to watch. Right. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'll check yeah. this stuff back later. But yeah, it's so insane like just having to be up for that long yeah. just to go around and, and and then have to take the picture and upload it and you you rock that and like from that point on i'm like i have to follow this woman oh thank you and thank you so yeah so i've been following it. you for a long time now <laughs> yeah i was gonna say that's like maybe 2018 it might have been yeah it was before it, it was before it was the in pandemic. my first it was yeah it was because it was in my first like two years of doing my classes in havana and so I think it was about 18, maybe, but, um, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, I know it's been a long time, but was yeah. it, uh, I was living in Phoenix again. I, I lived in Phoenix after New York. We were there for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. No, actually 17 years. Anyway, then yeah. from there, we came here. Well, yeah. the South of here, we were in Montpellier. Now we're in Paris. Now you're in Paris. But, yeah. uh, yeah, again, so obviously in, in that time, I, I'm, I don't think I started, uh, like messaging you for a long time like i don't message yeah. most people i just enjoy yeah. your work yeah I store it away and i and i move yeah. on but yeah again you've just been fascinating to watch and uh yeah. and i'm glad that i decided hey let me start energy this is a great way to meet people i can actually just interview people on on zoom it's you know what i love it's so true it's i am um, somebody posted something about that the other day about can you actually make friends on social media like absolutely I am, um, you know, Lori Hillsberg, who's one of my dearest friends here, came to Cuba with me, and I know her from Facebook and through a hipstamatic group, and and there's such an incredible group of people that that I'll share their photography, and I, I've met so many people. Like, mm -hmm. I there's just there's no question that that this leads to really good things, and I and I love yeah. that. So I'm so grateful you're doing these. <laughs> And I learned a lot. I love, I loved watching, I loved watching Amy's interview and I loved seeing the progress of her portraits. And I loved, you know, it was, it's insightful to see 
how other photographers do their work because it's generally such a solo thing yep. that um that it's it's interesting and that so 90% of the time it is a solo thing but now that I've started taking my trips to Cuba I'm usually with a group of anywhere from three max six people and it's very interesting when you shoot with a small group of people mm -hmm. and everyone's always kind of like you know in the beginning and they're yep. always like well I'm going to go off and do my own thing and I'm always like absolutely you have never had anyone leave the group ever <laughs> and well you're doing your groups on the street now yes it's the same oh. again I I I tend I, photography in general, as you as you just said, is uh, is typically a solo sport. You, you yeah. might be on a team, but it's like swimming. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. you, nobody's helping you. <laughs> no. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I encourage people to say, uh, let's learn something. We're all get together. Let's start as a group. Just mm -hmm. kind of see and and talk about some stuff, and then hey, I yeah. encourage everybody to just at any point just peel off. Yeah, we're gonna we're yeah. gonna meet up later. We're gonna show what we saw. Nobody peels yeah. off. Yeah, it yeah. ends up as yeah. Nobody peels off, yeah. which is Same. good. Nobody ever does. Yeah. And what, anybody, the good thing about keeping the group small is you don't have this monster mass of people with cameras walking through the street trying to be uh, unseen. Again, the, yeah. you kind of need to be unseen unless you're a street portrait photographer. Then, yeah. of course, you want to be seen, but. I, I, and I'm I joined, walking around with these people with these big old cameras and lenses. And I'm like, yeah. Are you <laughs> yeah. I joined a meetup group here in Paris just to, to meet some photographers. And uh, I, I, again, I'm not usually a meetup group kind of guy. I, I'm yeah. fairly solo. Yeah. But I'm like, oh, again, let me let me go and try this. A friend uh, who I know here in Paris is a photographer. And she said, mm -hmm. yeah, well, she's a member. I'm like, I'm going to go too. So I get there. I'm mm -hmm. thinking to myself, oh my God, there's going to be like a thousand people all walking with cameras because I see these yeah. groups, not necessarily that. But yeah. you can't miss the group of people walking with big cameras and you're like, huh, well, now, of course, I, mean, I know workshop, workshop, <laughs> workshop. Yeah. Yeah. This is just a group. And I remember somebody pulling me off on the side and I, it, who wasn't in the group. And he's like, excuse me, but what's with all the cameras? And yeah, like, what's, uh, going on here? <laughs> what's, yeah like, what's going on here? What's going on? What's so yeah. special about this spot? I'm like, everybody's just taking a break <laughs> just yeah, to meet up. Yeah, group. yeah. They, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's it can true. be funny. I still end up getting lost. Yes. The couple times I've gone out, I can never, I never, like, I have to constantly find out where the group is because I'm looking around. Next thing, the whole group's gone. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so. true. It's true. Well, I have go, going back to like it, we keep coming back to the circle of like enjoying what you do, mm -hmm. and um, I've had so many different people over the years come to me and be like, you know let's upscale this. You could do 15 people. You could have half the people in the morning and half the people in the afternoon. And you could easily do like, you could do this every other month. You could do this. I'll do all that. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, no. You just made me hate my favorite thing in the entire world. Right. <laughs> and, um, you know, sometimes it's more financially lucrative than others. And, um, but my last trip, I had three people, this trip, I have three people right now. I feel like I'm going to get one more but I don't, you know what? Then I get sort of lazy on my advertising because then it's so nice to just have three of us, you know, four people mm -hmm. at the dinner table every night. Usually, well, usually there's one or two friends in Havana. So, you know, maybe four to six people at the dinner table. But um, but it's nice. To, I, I like having this small group and you learn and you learn every single time mm -hmm. I learn something about the way somebody else approaches people or the way someone else moves to the street or, or how they engage with the person they're photographing right. or it, it's just, it's amazing how much you can learn having it be, as you said, a solo sport. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Again, and it's so. fun because the people that are coming to this, again, it, it's like, adult like, an, it's like adult sleepaway camp in my, the way I look at it. Like, it's like, yeah. it's it, you wonder, like everybody wants to learn something. Everybody does learn something. And sometimes the things you learn aren't the things you necessarily went to go learn. But yeah. it, it just as a yeah. group, and you learn from the people around you, not just. Yeah. So I've taken, I haven't taken nearly as many workshops as I would like. And as, over the years, I'm like, oh, I'd like to take that one. I'd like to take that one. I never get yeah. around to it. So yeah. when I have Am taken I them, I, again, I'm so looking forward to going there. I've been to Cuba <laughs> once, but this isn't, yeah. this isn't about me. So like, I'm not going to put my pictures of Cuba up because 
Okay. Your... <laughs> I, and we're going to get to yours in a minute. Maybe you can post I, I a few on to. Instagram for me this week. Yeah, I'll put, I want, want a Cuba picture on Instagram? Yeah, no problem. I do. Okay. I want to see one. Okay. Okay. I, 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 I've got one. I, I just showed, I did a, a master class last night and I actually used a picture from, of Cuba as a, a slow shutter picture. And I'm like, yeah. I haven't looked at that. I haven't looked at my Cuba pictures in seemingly forever. So I'm like, cool. Yeah. Well, I will, I'm going to brag about Cuba for a minute. Well, I could brag about Cuba endlessly, but um, I had, I had a student come on my last trip and I don't think I really said what I do. I'm going to back up really quick Okay. because I started talking about Cuba, but I know I didn't say exactly what I do. So what I have finally landed on, which I landed on in 2016 is I take people to Cuba and my trips to Cuba are now I'm just plugging myself. Oh, please. Um, no, this is this is part of the whole thing. I need you to plug yourself. <laughs> okay. So I take groups of people to Cuba. Like I said, this trip right now, I've got three people. Last time I had three people. Six is my max. I don't ever take more than that. And um, and I've become, I really wear like a variety of hats on these trips. I this trip I have coming up is the perfect example. I have three women coming. I have one woman coming who is an absolutely beautifully skilled professional photographer who does commercial work. She's done documentary work, travel work. She's, she's an incredible photographer. She's wonderful. I have another woman coming who is um, a hobbyist, but is taking classes and so excited about learning to use Photoshop and learning to use new, you know, things in her camera. She's, and now she's learning to do something. She told me this the other day and I can't remember, um, on camera movement. So she's working with like on camera movement to create motion in her images. Gotcha, right, and right, right. Mm -hmm. She's yeah. just excited about everything. And I have a third woman coming who um, has an iPhone is excited to learn to take better pictures because she loves to travel and she would love to take better photos. Right. And um, more than anything, she just wants to come to Cuba. So I have it's valid. I have like a whole val, you know, a whole variety of people coming. And so for the one woman, I will teach her all the ins and outs of her iPhone. And, um, my and, last no, trip, and I nobody had better three, to do it. Yes. Last trip, I had three people that, that were like, oh, I've been shooting with my iPhone or, oh, I don't really need to do it. Yeah. Every single one of them learned something they had no idea their iPhone could do, which is always kind of fun. Right. And, um, and then for the person I have coming, who's the, you know, who's a professional photographer, you know, I'm like, you will be in the right place at the right time. You will be at the Capitol on the morning when the light hits it perfectly. And we will be on the right street in March between the hours of 3.30 and 5.30 when the light is perfect. And these are the buildings we'll go into because the people here love to be photographed and are, so, so now I'm like a, a I'm kind of a guide Mm -hmm. I'm always a photography teacher. And then I think what I feel the best about is that I really give people permission to feel at home and comfortable on the streets in Havana. That's great. like if they leave and they're like, I had no idea, you know, because I, I'm so at home there and I'm so comfortable there that we're able to infiltrate a city you know, in a, in a one week time period in a pretty unique, pretty in-depth way. I, I had someone message me this week. Well, what other cities are we going to? And I'm like, none. I'm like, we're going to be in Havana. We're almost always going to be in central Havana. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll cover a lot of territory and we see a lot of things and we do a lot of different things, but I tend to do a deep dive on something. You know, I like right. to, I like to really focus on one thing and to really feel one thing and know one thing and um which which is what I'm doing I've committed to photographing Havana for 10 years and wow, that's cool and I'm a little I have a little over five years in obviously I wasn't there during COVID and um but now now I'm back at it so there's a little gap in that time that time frame but um well, but that's what you... I that's what brings me the most joy that's what I like to do the most it's the most fun wow that's what I'm gonna we're talking about Cuba so much. Let me bring up your photos of Cuba. Okay. Yeah. Let's see this little share screen thing. And there's a few, the there's a couple random things in there I shared that once we get them up, I'll I'll have a little bit more to say about them. Okay. But. So we're starting right here. Look at these two kids. Okay. Okay, well, just 
again there's just so much going on around the frame i love it, 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 it they're yeah, I'm not even sure how much I want to get into that guy's shirt. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's paint, but it okay. is funny. Um, can I tell you what I love about this shot? Oh, please, please. Well, obviously, we have to love the little sumo wrestler in the front. Yeah. Um, and I, this always blows me away. That That young man is, maybe he's eight? You think he's eight? I don't have kids, so I, 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 I think he's eight. I think he, I think he could be eight to 10, seven to nine, somewhere in that age. And I love that you can already see the Cuban machismo in him. <laughs> like you, you can already just feel that, that Cuban energy. And um, anyways, that's my favorite thing about that shot. That's why I, that's, that's what I was really loving there. That, that, that energy that is so specifically Cuban. And um, I have tons of images that demonstrate that, especially with the girls three, four years old, let me tell you, the hand is on the hip and they are sassin. And, um, Excellent. but yeah. Again, this guy's tattoos are killing me again. Yeah, I'm just yeah. imagining what you sit with your phone over the top of his head. And, uh, obviously you were comfortable in this situation. Yeah. This, that's why I included this shot. I don't think I could have, well, maybe I could have, I don't think I could have gotten this shot as easily with any other camera. And you can see my, you can see I have on uh, like those black pants, the black plaid pants. So you can see my okay. legs there. And okay. um, yeah, see, I wouldn't have even thought know, I stood that, there that and took you. pictures of this game for like probably half an hour, you know, three That's quarters cool. of the time. They don't ever know I'm, I'm taking any pictures. My, you know, my phone's on silent. I keep my, I kind of hold my phone right here. Usually I, I mostly look at it, but not always. And uh, yeah. obviously and people, with this shot, I wasn't looking because I'm, yeah. you know. And people just always assume that what's going to be, it's a phone. So they're not even thinking that they it's a camera. Any attention to me. I mean, this guy, I took pictures of him for a few minutes and he, at this point, he's not even paying any attention to me. He's, you know, he hadn't looked at me in 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> cool. I can just, a lot going up. The colors are gorgeous. The uh, well-filled frame, uh, Miss uh, Brooks graduate. Yeah, <laughs> I love these two. All right. again, and this... again, there's there's a lot going on here. It's not just with the uh, again the, the 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 really beautiful looks of these women, but also just the uh, the the again you have to, you have to, I'm, I'm going to stutter, yeah, stutter over this whole thing. But the uh, the framing, the you're, you've got a lot of uh, geometry going on, just very very well composed. And then you suck, you stick right on these two beautiful older women. Yeah. Well, this is, this is, um, this just makes me so happy. This image makes me so happy. This, um, these are sisters and I can't, I can never remember the woman with the blue top on the one with the green sweater is Estelle and she's the same age as my mom. She's 77. She's my Cuban mama. Um, she doesn't speak English. I don't speak enough Spanish to talk to her. Sometimes I bring a friend so that she'll translate for me does not stop me from going in there and sitting and talking to her, not every day, but maybe three or four days a week when I'm down there. And I started photographing her really in 2016 or 17. And I, I couldn't even, I mean, we could have just had my, every image we shot, we looked at today be of her. Like I could do a book of her practically. But what I love about this is that they're sisters and I have photographed them so much and the sister in the blue sweater passed away last year and oh. which obviously you don't love, but, um, I would be willing to bet 99% that, that the only photographs that they have of each other are mine. And, um, and I bring her prints all the time and she has so many prints of her and her sister. That's and, great. Um, and I just, I love that. I love that. I, similar to Amy in her interview where she sees people, you know, repeatedly and photographs them, you know, not regularly, but, you know, she comes across them and has mm -hmm. photographs of the same people. And so that's one of the things that I really love about the way I do my work right now is that I have people I really see all the time. And um, I have a handful of people now in Havana who I have photographed quite a bit who've passed away and mm -hmm. I'm able to give their families photographs. And I, I love that. It's special. I, again, that's, Again, that, kind of at the heart of what makes photography special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ah, same thing. These are, again, so what I've committed to doing is photographing Cuba. I'm, I'm trying to photograph the change and history and what's happening. And, and very sadly, I thought that I was going to be photographing life in Havana that was going to be like this. And now yeah. I'm photographing life in Havana that is like this. And um, so this is a man, I photographed him. I think that maybe that's 2017-ish. And um, and then the next few photographs are of him, and they are from the last year. Okay. And, oh, oh not yeah, that one. They're, they're not in order. I, I, okay, see. remember I, him. Okay, actually, I can get. Let's see. Can you pull them up though? Uh, yeah, let's see. So yep, that one. Is... Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, man, anyway, let me for like a, the hundredth age. time just tell you how impressed I am that this is shot on an iPhone. Like I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need you to tell me what the, what magic you use <laughs> to make the uh, these images look like they were on an iPhone. Yeah, it's not hard. <laughs> yeah. So we all say that when we can do something and other people can't. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's and that is. That's in that first image we looked at, the piano was there, you know, right. and now the piano's gone. And so what, what was the time frame between the, these, that first image and this one? I think it was only three years. Let me see. That's, there's that. And then Could say. let me just, okay. I think it's right under the, okay. We've got to I move us I can around. grab it real there quick. We go. If you don't have it right there. The, oh, right the, the new ones are 23. The question is, when is that? When is that one? Yeah. 16, 18. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And more than just his beard. The, the art, I'm glad the art is still there. It's a shame the piano is gone, but you can even see the decay in, mm -hmm. in the floor. And that's all his art. Else. That's his he's art. Got... But you can see his belly there. You can see he's got a little weight. Mm hmm uh, Anyways, of all the people I photograph now, he he's aged more than any of them. This this man passed away last year, and mm -hmm. um, he was he sat in this he sat in that little hole in the wall right. all day every day. He's like probably one of the most Instagrammed, you know, men in Havana. <laughs> and I just I love photographing him, and I love, um, you know, gosh, I'm gonna sound like such an ass when I say this. Um, he was always there and he loved being photographed. And so like when I had classes there, I would be like, okay, there's going to be a man up here on the right. He's going to be in the hole in the wall. You can practice your portrait photography. He is going to look at you. He'll smile. He'll not smile. He, you know, he will just sit there and endlessly let you photograph him. And, wow. um, and so I really, I saw him a lot and I really liked him. And um, anyways, I miss him. Yeah, I miss him. The Malacan, you, you can't, you can't, what's going to be in Havana and not go by the Malacan? Nope. So another random thing that, um, what I find that I'm documenting that I didn't know I was going to be documenting. The class, the last classes I took, I took a class in 2020 in January, right before, you know, COVID. And we had so many photographs on the Malacone. I mean, I'd have pictures. I don't know if you, if you saw this when you were there. I mean, I feel like there would have been a hundred fishermen on that wall. I mean, just lines of them. And I don't know if COVID changed it more. I don't know if um, they say the fish aren't there as much. I don't know if the temperature of the waters changed or whatever. Mm. But now when I go, they'll kind of be fishermen out there. But, but it's, it's just, it's not the same anymore. There's, you know, maybe there'll be three or four out there. And, and um, what, uh, the time I was there, was, there was only one time we were there for about, I think five days. Yeah. And what was it was 2016, I think it was. And yeah, yeah it, there weren't, there weren't that many uh, people along the wall. There were people walking, but it wasn't the crowd that you're describing or that you can yeah. expect well and it depends on the time of year it has to be the right, right the right months for fishing it was but hot it, it was it was hot it was joy, that's joy. summer then it, the fishing's not good this was yeah. fishing in january so mm -hmm. yeah but it it's was, just uh, 
the things that changed that I didn't know were going to change, you know, and mm -hmm. the picture of the, the guys playing dominoes, I still yeah. see the people playing dominoes, but I think, I think the, the phones, you know, when I first started going, Cubans didn't have data, so they mm -hmm. didn't, they, they would have their phone, but all they would be doing on it was like playing video games. Right. And, and now there's more phones and there's more things going on. I bet, I bet the number of domino games I see on the street now has decreased 75%. Wow. And you're saying, I think because of phones, which is possible. When phones I was there, both. Uh, yeah, when I was there, it was because there was like no, nobody had phones. I remember seeing what's got uh, people lining up. There was, there's this one spot they were giving out ice cream. Like they were, the locals just lined up for ice cream in this one oh, big they, long line. They love ice cream. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Again, my this kids were really this... young, so I wanted to go out and see a lot of. I can, there's music in the streets uh, on a daily basis, but the nighttime music, which I was really looking forward to, unfortunately, our kids were a bit too young to leave alone. <laughs> well, so. it's uh, the well, and the new iPhones, man, talk about changing, changing the world in photography. It's just, I, awesome. I just, I have so much fun shooting at night now when I'm in Havana. Cool. This is this again is just normal street photography. This is um again when I speak of having more professional photographers come. I took this last March, and I love the light on these two. There's, there's two streets right here, and the late afternoon, early evening light on this street is just beautiful. And so that's gorgeous. I'm, I'm exci excited to spend some some serious time on this block. <laughs> I hear you. I can imagine. Oh, this is. Yeah, the, well, trying to, who uh, I'm trying to think uh oh it's killing me there's a famous photograph and i if i wasn't on the spot right now which i put myself on i would know yeah. was it frank horvat i'm not I'm sure not gonna, i don't but know. yeah again picture this in black and white in probably the 60s or so mm -hmm. and this is a this is that shot it's very cool yeah Yep. There's several of him. This is, there's so many photos of that little kid right there in that series. But um, again, I think that that image is coming from, you know, starting to see a lot more media, starting to see a lot more, right. you know. Like his Hulk his, shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> again, that's, that's what we saw. Photo. And yeah, again, going back here, I was going to remember hit that picture prior where, yeah, he had a bit more of a belly and now as he's getting older, the beard, the beard's getting longer, the belly's coming in versus going out. Yeah, yeah. He really aged a lot. Whereas the picture I showed you of my, um, of the sisters. Right. Estelle hasn't aged one day from the first photograph I took of her to the most recent. Wow, that's cool. It's cool, yeah. cool for her, cool for the story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, this guy's uh, got some interesting tattoos. Was it from Silence of the Lambs? I know it has to be a reference to that, and I'm I see it. I don't know if it me. I don't know if it references something else because I have two other young Cuban men right now that have moths tattooed on them, okay. and um, not as not as large or as beautiful as this one. Oh, sure. And this is this is the beginning of the. That shot is the beginning of the portrait mode getting a little bit better, but it's still, you can see where his curls, I oh, lost right, a few right, right. curls up there in the top where yeah, those, I'm yeah. the camera that wouldn't have happened. If I were more aggressive in my Photoshop, I could, I could get rid of all of that, but I've kind of decided that, you know, so much of the, the history of my photographs show the progression of the iPhones. So I'm like, eh, well, you yeah, should, right. you should approach <laughs> Apple. Yeah. Yeah. Say, look, because you just hear, I can show the uh, the evolution of your, of your product. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that is one of the things I've noticed is that I, I like the idea of uh, portrait mode until I, I've got kind of curly hair, and uh, with my wife's hair, it uh, it looks perfect on her because her hair is straight. So I'll I'll take some photographs or some video of her. Yeah. Perfect. I do it yeah. me, and suddenly I've got these more amorphous <laughs> things coming yeah. out. Like I'm, it, and I'm like, okay, yeah. that just doesn't look real at all for me. Like so, yeah. <laughs> I have to, I have to go with one one way, and I can photograph yeah. for another way. Yeah, it's true. Cool. 
And again, yeah, picking beautiful. up that highlight on the top of his head right there with mm -hmm. no light. I mean, that sun is gone. Right. And um, my beautiful friend. <laughs> I just added this. This is a this is a newer shot. I just added this to the selection that I sent you, and mm -hmm. I love the photo. I mean, I love the photograph. It's in a new place for me. I have I am I've been shooting in this area. It's sort of outside of Havana a little bit. And one thing I can tell you about Havana: their fountains and pools are always empty right. because water is a thing. And but I think the thing I liked was just like the visual struggle here, like. He's trying so hard to get her up and she's trying so hard to pull herself out. And man, that is life in Cuba right now. But, but it's a, a beautiful, subtle color palette too. Like on top yeah. of on top of that. Yeah, the colors all came together right there. Another another image that um that I sh I'm sharing for lots of different reasons. I took this last Halloween and since 2016, 17, I've always been going in October because it's the end of hurricane season. Okay. So it's the first time I can go again. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I can go anytime I want, but obviously. But uh, normally I don't go too much in the summer because it sounds like you might know that it is hot. Mm -hmm. So normally I'm not there May, June, July, August, September, October, about six months out of the year. And um, But I was there for the for my first year, I was there at Halloween and I never saw anything for Halloween, nothing, like zero. And then I started bringing down like little teeth and like these little spider rings and things for the kids. And they had no idea like what I was doing. And um, anyways, this last Halloween, there was there was quite a bit of Halloween presence on the street. And cool. um, it's the first it's the first time that that I could have like very actively been shooting Halloween. And anyways, I, this was my favorite picture from that, from that yeah, Halloween. Halloween. My uh, youngest daughter is an absolute Halloween addict. And it seems to be the one in, uh, in, there's uh, there's differences between the U S and, and France. One of them is that they don't seem to make a big deal of Halloween. They, yeah. It's here. There's, it's subtly growing, but yeah, it's yeah. Compared to what we're used to in the U S if you like Halloween, this isn't yeah. the place for you. No, no, much different. This is, These are, I have a folder called time capsule. This is from my time capsule folder. And um, anyways, the the two pictures of him on the bottom, I think mm -hmm. were 2016. And then I haven't seen him in ages and I ran into him, you know, oh, that's him up top. Here. And so that's him up top. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't, I, I did. If you didn't tell me that, I would have not figured that I, that, Hey, you're trying to figure out what the relationship to the with these photos is. I the two on the bottom yeah. are obvious. Yeah. But then with no the top, problem. I'm like, huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I yeah. want to hand some young guys. And you can see the improvement of the portrait mode because those curls have some pretty yeah. definition from the background. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's serious. <laughs> like, yeah, why can't I again you're obviously getting a better you you're buying a better portrait mode than I, I'm buying. That's <laughs> <laughs> And on the bottom, none. Yes. Same thing here. They're not, I don't know. These just, these images, like, they just hold a place in my heart. The, the image on the left, I actually really love. The image on the right, um, I just took this again, this last trip. But that's the same kid. Well, I love on the image on the right. Again, the, the little kid looking through the uh, the post, I think, yeah. pretty much makes the, again, well, it's well composed and all that, but the, the him looking through there, like it's almost like a like an Easter egg. You just, yeah. It, it, yeah. His, it doesn't stick out, and suddenly you see that expression on him, and you're like, "Wow, that's that's great." And I I liked that. Um, I think that kid kind of peeking up at him looks to be about the same age as he was in the first picture on the left. Yeah, that's that's that um, looks like it. Like if you didn't and you mention can see that this is the same kid. Is still there mm -hmm. he's if you didn't so mention it was the same kid i would have thought that that was a picture of the again that the, the little kid was the same one yeah 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 but it was um anyways and i have to show you one thing i think the picture on the left that's an old one that's got to be 2017 ish you know i think 17 so we're talking an iphone 7 i think wow. an iphone 
All right, this is annoying to carry you around my house, but it's what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, you I can't see it that great, I know, I, but I, well, I see, I see it very well. But that is him. That is probably twenty. 18 by 30 24 by 32 maybe but that's you can't you know, i know you're not going to tell from here that's an iphone 7 well i, I was going to say because you were mentioning a minute ago that that was an mm -hmm. iphone 7 and look how again it's a beautiful shot yeah and it prints beautifully yeah, and so I, didn't, I, I, I didn't do much to it um yeah you've inspired me to uh to start actually practicing with my phone <laughs> so and also if for a nice place where, where are you are you in brooklyn uh, I'm in brooklyn Queen? yeah okay yeah. and so again as i have a tendency of doing i go along because uh i can't shut up and again your 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 story is amazing we are in trouble because we are both the same <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even talk about the fact that you lived in Kauai for a million years or all yep. the other stuff we, but we, yeah, we have there's like an episode two in this <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, once I get started in talking about Cuba, I usually, it, it can go on for a very long time and I get, I get very, you know, focused that on that. And I think this is another thing I think that's important. And I'm curious, I'm curious about you living in, living in Paris and me. Well, I don't have it in New York because I do photograph here. I do, I do get out. I do street photography. I always have my camera. I mean, I'm always taking pictures and but I don't shoot the way I shoot when I'm in Havana. Cause when I'm in Havana, that is the only thing I'm there to do. Like it right. is, it is, it is focused and intentional. And I walk, you know, I walk 10 miles a day, most days because I'm up from sun up to sundown. But I, um, I feel like one of the things that, that supports being a good street photographer is, is repetition. And um, I'm such a creature of habit. And I have no issue going out and walking those exact same streets over and over and over and over again. I, I don't ever get tired of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, again, this says, and that's how bodies of work are grown and historical records are made, not by constantly yeah. seeing different things all the time. It's by seeing the yeah. same thing growing over time, like you're doing with Cuba. If you yeah. do the same thing with, uh, again, with New York, as a bunch of street photographers out there, all these bodies of work sometime in the future can all be threaded together and it's going to be an amazing documentary yeah yeah coming together slowly but surely so excellent it's so again thank you so much i'm so happy that i finally got to meet you even if you were even this if was it was like uh, two thousand yeah. miles away or something like yeah. that but uh, and one you know, of these the, days you're going to look down at your sign up and i'm going to be signed up for one of your street <laughs> photography in in paris and weren't you going were you going to rome as well Am I imagining yeah, Rome, that? Yeah, Rome is still in the works. Like, I'm still not, like, it's going to happen. I haven't made it happen yet. I love Rome. <laughs> Rome was almost, it was that close to being was where we moved to. Mm -hmm. But it's going to, I, France is just, for us, has a, I prefer Italian food. I will give you that. Like, I, I definitely think the Italians have the food thing done. Yeah. But it's going to. We're exactly the same. But I'm more of a, I, somehow just feel more french in a way just the the the, the culture than i do yeah. what's going on with the the culture and i love i love going to italy but it's always as a vacation okay i have um, to give you i have to give you i'm making these up as i go these are going to be my three my three things to make sure professional photographers know they can do on their iphone please you know you can control where the focus is and the exposure. I've heard that, but I don't know how. <laughs> okay. Um, you can completely control the focus and the exposure. If you touch the screen, you get a little teeny sunshine and you drag your finger up and down huh. and it will control the lightness and the darkness. On the new iPhones, there's a little scale on the top left and you can control it by a third of a stop and it will stay there so that you're not constantly changing it. Um, you can put it in pro mode and shoot raw files. Okay. And so you can shoot raw if you like. I actually don't like to, but you can. And in portrait mode, now when you edit, you can change exactly where the focus box is going to be. And then you can control the amount of um, softness for mm -hmm. your background. You can, you can add or subtract that. 
So, um, anyways, those those are the things I'm going to well, um, to leave actually, you I've with. I've got then in this case, I have an actual pointed question. How okay. do you get the uh, the color uh, color balance to stay locked in? Because it, it, especially if you're doing a video, if you're, you're sitting there, nothing seems to be changing, and all of a sudden. You're, you can see what's called things start to move. I'm like, come on, I yeah. don't need this to move. Yeah, yeah. Um, the first thing to do, like when I get my iPhone is I go in and I turn off the HDR settings. Okay. And I turn off, I try, I, if anything, actually, God, I love so many new things. I love the new things and I love the quality of the new iPhones, but they have started putting so much it, it look it, it's getting too canned for me. Gotcha. I really don't like how how much they're canning it. So I've got to go in and turn off as much as I can. I turn off the HDR. I turn off the automatic balancing, and I turn all those things off. And if you use um, a different app for doing the recording, a lot of times it it doesn't change it as much. Right. And you know, there's just that's a whole nother conversation. There's a million of them. Um, but I use Pro Camera a lot. They have good video features. And and my favorite thing about Pro Camera is that your full screen can be the trigger. So like I'm not a very tall person. And if I want to hold my camera up really high and take a picture, just I can touch anywhere on the screen. Or mm -hmm. if I'm wanting to be invisible, I don't have to like be touching the little teeny dot, which right. I like. And um, so using another app will help making sure the HDR stuff is turned off. And um, okay, and then so settings and preferences. And the last thing, which I probably should have, uh, for the people that are watching, and and uh, I won't even mention it for me. Uh, what what are your uh, favorite apps to use to uh, again to to turn those because it's not straight out of camera. Like, there's just no way that Apple's that good. No, I am. The, what I use the most right now is Snapseed. I like Snapseed, and I love Snapseed, and I add the um. I use the grainy, I use the grainy app. Like I dial it in a little bit. And if anything, I'm trying to, I'm trying to have them look a little bit. And especially also because it's Cuba. It's also, you know, I'm simulating kind of an older, grainier, right. moody feel a lot of times. And, um, and I, I like that look. I like that, you know, especially for Cuba. But um, so do I. anyways, I use Snapchat. Why I've been following you for so long. I love, I, I um, love how you see it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I think what makes what makes a big difference a lot of times, especially in portrait mode, is that if I shoot in portrait mode and then I take it back into Snapseed and I and I edit the image post the portrait mode, mm -hmm. I just it just I think they look good. You know, like the right. like the picture of the kid with the moth on his chest right. with the tattoo. Um you know, can you still see the little bit of, of where, you know, the depth of field didn't find his, his curls? Well, yeah, you can, but, um, you know, the feel of that image with, you know, changing the saturation, the color tone, adding some grain, a little bit, bring the highlights out. It just, I don't know. I think it, I think it brings something more to the image. So, I agree. but I was just in India and I was trying so I went with my parents. They've never been. It was my I think it was my fourth trip. And really? mm -hmm. wow. and they um I really just wanted to document everything. Like I wanted to doc, I want a family album, you know? And then I would feel like I had to edit everything. And I was like, screw it. I can't do that. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna photo dump every day or two as you know, as as much as my energy will hold. Mm -hmm. And I didn't edit them at all. And dang, they're That's getting so good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was looking at me just before. Yeah, because you were you were posting India stuff up until recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still am. I haven't been. I've been home one week, I think. So, yeah. I'm glad you uh you got the jet lag out of the way and you got the coffee settled. Yes. And uh, good. hopefully your <laughs> hopefully your neighbor's dog is okay. Yes, the dog's good. Coffee's coffee's in hand. All is yeah. well. Um, jet lag's gone, and I'm off to Cuba on the sixth. So excellent. One of these days I'm going to get out there again. It's easier as an American for me to get to uh, Cuba from here than it was to uh, get there from uh, the U.S. Like, I can just buy a direct ticket and fly straight it's to Cuba. E it's easy now. And I, gosh, 
this is one of those things. Sometimes when, sometimes when things when disappointing things happen, I have to like, just pretend they didn't happen and just keep on going. <laughs> uh-huh. There has been a direct flight from Newark to Havana since 2016. Really? And they got rid of it last fall. Like half of the reason I wanted to move to New York was so that I could have the direct flights to Cuba. And they had so it for fly down to Miami barely right a now? year of me living here. So now I go Miami. Yeah. New York, Miami, Miami, Havana. But there's direct flights from Houston, Fort Lauderdale, and Miami. Gotcha. Yeah. Right, so, okay. I keep thinking the last thing. So last thing, uh, how, how is it still the the process that you have to have like a, a range of like predetermined uh, reasons for going to Cuba? To yes, you, yes, okay. And I'm sure very, every one of them is 100 percent valid. No one was ever what's called uh It's very pretend. specific. So yes. the reason that we can go to Cuba, when you, you buy your visa at the gate, when you're getting ready to get on the airplane, this is when you buy the visa. And the reason we can go is to support the Cuban people. And we are encouraged to um, enjoy Cuban art, to um, listen to Cuban music, to eat Cuban food, to um, culturally connect with people. And those are the things we're supposed to do. Uh, we are not allowed to be there on vacation. You're not allowed to go just to drink mojitos because that's maybe not supporting the Cuban people. You're not allowed to give the government any money or spend any time on a military base. Oh, yeah. That and, doesn't seem like it's a hard so. thing to uh, to not do. <laughs> so I avoid those things. And um uh, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to eat at state-run restaurants or state-run hotels. But oh. um, once you're there, there's no there's no credit cards. Everything is cash ba- cash base cash basis. Mm-hmm. And um, of course, I would never do this. But maybe some people go to the new state-run hotels that have beautiful rooftops with views of the Park Central. And, um, you know, and if those people were to pay cash for their drink, nobody would ever know they were there and they yeah. still avoid it too. But, but yeah, you know, but, but I but wouldn't who, do that. Yeah, but, who, I, 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 don't even, I don't think I would even know anybody like that. <laughs> I just don't associate with those types. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yes, that would, that would be crazy. So, um, but anyways, it's it's very easy to get there, and it's um, it's an amazing country to travel in, and it is just, it is. I, I still don't even know how to describe it. It is, you just have to pinch yourself, and it's it's heartbreaking and amazing that you get off of that airplane in Havana, and you are. 90 miles from Miami and you are just, you know, you're less than an hour flight from the United States and you are, it's unimaginable. You know, it's just so different. I was, I've, I've used this example for a long time, um, comparing India and, and now I just happen to come home from India. So it's a little more relevant, but what I can tell you is that, you know, travelers consider India to be the you, you've got to be a brave traveler to, to go to India. India could be a tough place to travel. It's an, in, it's yeah. an intense place. That's for sure. Yeah. But what I can tell you is that I have been at, you know, at the highest Shiva t- temple in the world at 17,000 feet in the Himalayas and bought a bottle of water and some chai and used the ATM machine and made a phone call because I have international calling. And yeah, you can't do any of those things in Havana. Yeah. I, the last time I was there, I forgot I didn't have water in my room at the end of the day. And I ended up walking 45 minutes trying to find a bottle of water. And um, there's no international calling plans. No. There's the internet now is pretty good. But last time I was there, you know, it rained for a day. I mean, not only was there any, not any Wi-Fi, there wasn't even any like local cellular anything. There's no ATMs. You can't pay for anything with... Um, you know, with a credit card, you're going to bring enough cash for your whole trip. You're, you know, it's, it yeah. is, it is a challenging, if you well, know it's how funny. to travel, it's not challenging, but it takes some prep. It takes some work. Well, again, this is how, how travel used to be in the world up until, I don't know. Yeah. The yeah. the nineties. <laughs> so yeah. prior to 1990, if you wanted to go someplace, you, you, 
you went to a travel agent. Yep. You uh, you booked all this stuff. You made sure that you changed you you changed your currency again. Yeah. People yeah. had credit cards, but it, if you want to move it back a decade to the eighties, and it's good. Uh, traveler's checks. Yeah, traveler's checks. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Who, nowadays you, you you have to be a certain age to even know what a traveler's check was, and I'm so, I'm assuming that you read about it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's true. It's true. I know when you think when I think back about what what the world was like when I started traveling. That was a different but, level of traveling. Yeah. I mean, I had to have a calling card and you had to have the right yeah. phone mm -hmm. and I had to go to a bank to have money sent to me. I couldn't, there wasn't an ATM machine that I could get cash out on. You couldn't make phone calls. You couldn't email you, you know, you talked, called home once a week. Yeah. I remember and, when I was in the Navy, I, I was overseas. We pull into a port and all of a sudden I'd, uh, I may have to make a, 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 a my mom had given me the uh, her the calling card. Otherwise, I'd have yep. to make a collect phone call. Yep. And yep. Uh, yeah, and you're sitting there in a phone booth. That's what uh, yep. waiting to be connected. Or sometimes you're like you do the the uh, just to make sure some people you, that you're okay. You make yep. the collect call. They, they yep. decline the charges. <laughs> um, and then, that's what you do in Havana now. Yeah. Well, when I have someone coming coming to pick me up or I'm meeting a friend, they're like, okay, I'll call as soon as I'm downstairs. Don't pick up. They call, they let it ring once, I hang up, and I come down. Cool. Yes. Yeah. I can tell you that um, I wish this could have been different. And now I guess, I guess it's what I do in a sense. When I was 18 and I lived in Paris, I wanted to have a personalized travel service. And I was like, even at that point, I'm like, I don't need to tell people how to go to the Louvre. And I don't need to tell people that the Museum d'Orsay is my favorite. I don't need, like, I don't need to tell people any of these things. These things are boring. But I wanted to connect with people when they arrived in Paris. I wanted to teach them how to use the Metro. I wanted to tell them where my favorite bakery was. I wanted to tell them where my favorite streets to walk down were. And and I really, I tried to figure out a way to do it for a few months and I couldn't figure out any way to do it. There wasn't any, there wasn't yeah. any way to find people or communicate with people. And I was like, well, I mean, and there wasn't email. So it's not like I could have like, you know, send an email out to friends and be like, Hey, if your friends are coming to Paris, have them, you know, yeah. and it's amazing when I look at how much technology has changed now. 100%, and, yeah. And that now you can just, you could just do that. Well, and now you don't even need to do it because we have all the different travel apps and Yelp and all the different things that, mm -hmm. that we have. But if I could have figured out a way to do that when I was 18 year old, 18 in Paris, that is what I would have wanted to do more than anything. And yeah, uh, surprising you, you didn't run into my wife who was, uh, she studied abroad in Paris around that time. Did she? Yes, where, yeah. where did she? What did she do? Uh, it was a business. She was uh, studying business, and uh, <laughs> she was she lived in China, like the uh, Chinatown. I forget what what arrondissement that is. It wasn't the sixteenth. I forget where. I was actually there recently, just uh, because of Chinese New Year. I went to just go to photograph some parade prep. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that kind of like set her in motion of one day wanting to come back, and then uh, we met. So we've come we came here a bunch the kids ended up thinking paris is their favorite city in the world and then and uh, how just, old are your kids now uh one's 19 and one's 17 17 did you get them there young enough that they're bilingual no actually the older one was actually paid attention in school she started taking it in in the u.s and mm -hmm. like i'm like why and she just wanted to we lived in yeah. arizona well you should probably be taking spanish she wanted to take french yeah. haha she's smarter than i am she yeah. uh and she's really good at it too. Yeah. Uh Melissa's good at understanding it. She's a little nervous to speak it. I'm pulling up the end, like I'm I'm the caboose in this whole uh language train. And my uh I have yeah, no and, you know what, Keith, we're visual people. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's my what only I, tell I don't speak Spanish. But it's funny how you can get along with people like to your point earlier with that woman that you uh you see all the time. You can sit with her and have a conversation. I had a client in Mexico. It was a commercial client. And so every time I would fly down there, I had this this one woman who's, uh, who I think she's kind of, she's connected to the client. Anyway, so she was amazing. I love this woman. She didn't speak a word of English. I didn't speak a word of Spanish. We'd spend a week together. 
the, just yeah. the two of us. And so yeah. again, and, and models and yada yada. Yeah. So we're just, yeah. We would laugh. We're yeah. again, we get our point across. We're having a great time. Didn't under, literally understand a word the other one said, and yet yeah. had. And then I go and I went frequently, and so yeah. it was always the same thing. They're like family to me. Like, and so yeah. we went down. Yeah. I, I I photographed uh, her her younger daughter's wedding. Yeah. And as a surprise uh, to the daughter, obviously the yeah. mother knew, and uh, yeah. I was like, I was home. And yeah. yeah, and yeah, I didn't have still at that point. Irma still didn't speak a word of English, and I still could say maybe five things in Spanish. Yeah, yeah, same. The only time uh, this is a funny story. The only time I've ever felt a very serious need to speak Spanish, and I told myself I would learn to say this, and I still have not. But um, I was at Estelle's house, who's the woman whose photograph that we shared with her and her sister, and. They live in this little teeny room that is just you until you've been to Cuba, you just can't imagine what these rooms of their homes are like. And she's got a chair with metal legs, and then she's got like some sort of grill and then a piece of metal and something else that's kind of got a cage underneath this. And she's very excited that I've come by and she wants to show me something which ends up being a chicken. And so she has a chicken that lives in in the room. It's just a one room house kind of mm -hmm. and the chicken lives underneath this chair and she wants to show me this chicken and I'm like oh look it's a chicken it's a chicken and and she's showing me the chicken and I'm like great and then she's trying to get the chicken out from underneath the chair and I can't figure out why she can't get the chicken but she wants to get this chicken out and I'm like no 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 it's okay it's okay I see the chicken I see the chicken and I'm like it's beautiful and um so then she goes and gets a knife and I'm like, no, no. And I'm like, this, so this is the only thing I've ever wanted to be able to say in Spanish. Don't kill the chicken. Don't kill the chicken for me. Please do not kill this chicken for me. Anyways, she gets the knife and she's going for the chicken. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, no, no. And she's like, yes, yes. Well, the chicken is tied to the leg of the chair. So she can't okay. get it out and she can't untie it. So she gets the knife to cut the string because she wants me to hold the chicken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I thought this, this is about to be a meal. I'm like vegetarian, like, vegetarian. Oh, yeah, don't kill this chicken for me right here in front of me. Please don't do it. And um, really, that's the only time I've ever felt panicked about having a language barrier. And um, but she did not kill that chicken. And the last time, I, not last time, maybe, maybe in the last year though, maybe two or three times ago, I was there. Again, she's looking for something in this house. I don't know what she's looking for. And again, this is, of course, the language barrier. But you know what? It's kind of fun. It's all right. She's looking for something. She's excited. I'm there. She's looking. She can't find it. And then she's like, oh, I remember. And she goes and she opens up the washing machine, which is this very strange plastic kind of rudimentary washing machine, which if you've been to third world country, you've seen one. And I don't know if this works or not. There's a lot of things about this that don't make sense to me. Anyways, she's like, has her aha moment and she opens up the washing machine and that's where she keeps her kittens. <laughs> she pulls these kittens out of the washing machine, gives me these kittens. And then I'm just sitting here going, man, I don't know that I would have kept my kittens in the wash. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. And then, you know, she was like, she was like, no, it's safe. It's safe. You know, I don't yeah. know if that's what she was saying. That's what I think yeah. she was saying. Well, you know, well, this way so. in the washing machine, the, uh, the chicken can't kill the cat, the kittens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So anyways, last time I was there, then the next time I went, we're down to, we're down to one cat, one kitten. And, um, and the last time I was there, I think I only saw the mama kitten. I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. someone took the. Who knows? Who knows? I don't. I don't ask those things. They, they learned their way. They learned how to get out of the washing machine. Obviously, so. maybe it was in the washing machine. I don't know. I didn't ask. <laughs> but uh -huh. um, oh. anyways, but that you know what? That's what I love about being a photographer. That that I'm driven to go see her, and that relationship is there, and the repetition is there, because I want to photograph her, and because I want to tell her story. Mm -hmm. And then, and then that's what you get. So you wouldn't know you wouldn't have a a chicken and a, and a cat in the washing machine story if it wasn't for your <laughs> uh, your camera. Like exactly. you have this, 
it yes. traces all the way back to Brooks and go, if it wasn't for that, or yes. even be or beyond that, even that this, yep. the, these little things that, yep. yeah, I, it, 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 it's mind numbing. If you think, and it just, it can put you in a panic. If you think about let's go, how little the threat is, that yep. was good. any little, any change. When people think they want to go back into history and I, if I could go back, I would change this. If you like anything about your current position, change nothing, even yeah. the bad things, because they all yeah. lead to where you to that the happy moment you are. Yep. If you've got nothing to lose, then you might just let yep. it go. But yeah, very true, very very true. I'm curious when you lived in Williamsburg, was that was it at the same time that I was here? Was that ninety? Yeah, you know, right around the, right around then. Again, we have a bunch of parallels. I know it, it, it's so funny when you come across people like that. I mm -hmm. it, it always amazes me. But yeah, yeah so uh, there, then went back to the Bronx. Eventually, was uh met my wife. We uh, lived in Manhattan for a while. Moved up to Nyack, out to Arizona, yeah. and now we're here. And where in Arizona were you? Uh, most of the time, Phoenix. In Phoenix. My um, yeah. my great grandparents, my grandparents, and even my mom lived in Phoenix a lot. We spent a lot of time in, well, more in Scottsdale, Scottsdale, mm -hmm. and and carefree. But yeah, so we good. first moved into because it, it just happened to be it was a whim. We just moved because we got tired and like, we're impulsive, and uh, yeah, so. Just got the desire one night to move and uh a week later we had a house and so or actually a week later we signed on a house yeah and uh yeah so that was this, i don't ever advocate to move that quick on many things but it always works for us so like it, it, i'm the same when i when i moved here i had spent i was living in Kauai in colorado and i was here in New York on work with a, um, a social media platform that's, uh, it's called Stellar and they yeah. do photography stories and now more travel oriented, but I was here with Stellar for the week and the, the people from Stellar that I was with, there was a young man here and he's, uh, from, from England, he's British. And every day, all day we were here, he was like, New York is the best city in the world. I'm going to live in New York. Someday I'm going to live in New York. I want to live in New York. I'm going to live in New York. And I said, you should, you should, you'll love it. It's amazing. Everyone should live there once. I had absolutely zero desire whatsoever to ever live in New York again, not even on the radar in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. And I got home from, from that trip and I was in Boulder, Colorado, and I walked out my door and I walked out the door and I said, I'm going to move to New York. And that was it. Just happens yeah you know who knows right. okay wait so how did you guys get to paris uh it was just on a list of, uh it was like we had decided at one point that uh we wanted to i mean just take control again, again business was successful we're doing well but it was just same old same old same old so we wanted to uh change stuff up we love to travel Mm -hmm. so we made like a, a five-year plan like just mm -hmm. a dream board yeah. and so on my contribution to the thing is i said i want uh an apartment in paris within the next five years mm -hmm. so all right cool P pinned up well we managed to get things rolling faster than uh than we thought and uh so as, as we're getting closer uh, i was probably as opposed to five years it became like we did it in about three and mm -hmm. uh, so I was thinking, oh, cool, Paris, Paris, here we come. And Melissa's like, you know, and she had always wanted to come here, but you know, we've been living in Arizona now for like over 15 years. And uh, I don't know if I can handle Paris weather. Maybe we should have looked for someplace else. And yeah. so a friend of hers told her about Montpellier, which we never even heard of. Yeah. 300 days of sun a year. Again, it's like Goldilocks. It's not too big. Yeah. It's not too small. It's well-placed. It's your 20 minutes. Is it west of Paris? No, it's uh, right off the Mediterranean. Oh, so, okay. uh, yeah, so right off the Mediterranean. So it's a three and a half hour train ride if you take high high speed rail, which of course you're going to, because why wouldn't you? So, yeah. so it was great. And uh, we went there 20 minutes from the bed. Uh, you know, one of the, it's got great access to everything. Uh, it's got a, <laughs> a good rail system. It's got a, an airport. It's, you can drive. So, so we lived there, made some friends. And then uh, I was up here teaching a workshop. And uh, I get a text, and she's like, "Let's move to Paris." Like, are you are you serious? 
<laughs> if you, yeah, I am. Ah, yeah. okay. Well, I guess I'm moving to Paris. <laughs> there you go. And nice. which is good. And were your kids, what age were your kids when that happened? Were they away at school? Oh, no, were they we've only, we've only been here. We've only been here in in France in total for about two years. Like, uh, I'm a year and a half, a little year and a half, year and three quarters. My uh, so we did it in two sh two phases. Uh, Melissa and our older daughter mm -hmm. came first because the, they're the two that uh, I mean, Bella was about to graduate high school, so she finished her high school online, and yeah. the two of them were better with French. The younger one was still in high school. Yeah. Or actually was about yeah she's she had to finish her grade and i had to wrap up business and sell the house and and mm -hmm. get all that stuff in order and i speak like i took french in eighth grade like in junior high school and uh and the only reason i passed it was because the uh the girl that sat next to me was bad in earth science and i was bad in french so there you go yeah so yeah. she let me cheat off of her for french for the test and i let her cheat off of me yeah. for earth science and we both passed Perfect. Nice. So I never in my life thought I was going to use French. So, yeah. and then, uh, so we got here and I'm, yeah, I'm still barely, I'm, I'm much better than I was. And, yeah. but, but that's, it's such a low bar that uh, it's embarrassing. Yeah. That makes me feel so much better about myself. So I appreciate that because <laughs> I'm the same. I, I, I took French all the way through school. I lived in Paris when my brain was 18 years old. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I had an 18 year old brain in there. <laughs> and yeah, it, it um, should be absorbing it. <laughs> exactly. And I, I still really could never speak French and I can hear it better than I can hear Spanish. And if I'm sitting next to people, I realize that I can pick up little pieces of the conversation, but, yeah. but really not much. And then what really, I mean, this is so lame to say, I'm never, you know, I probably speak put eight, at least eight years into, in, you know, to focusing on French in some capacity or other. And I never even came close to getting beyond, you know, where's the bathroom and being able to mostly read a menu and getting directions. I mean, I never even came close to being able to know, you know, to say, don't kill the chicken <laughs> or to ask, you know, to ask a Cuban about, you know, what is your life like here? And what have these changes been? And how are, and why are you experiencing this? And I mean, and so then I just feel lazy about it. I'm like, because if I'm going to learn the language, that's what I want to know. That's what I want. I want to be able to talk to people. And I can ask where the banyo is and I can order a mojito. And, mm -hmm. and when I say I can order a mojito, I can say mojito. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm telling you, as soon as we're done, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to say, please don't kill the chicken in French. <laughs> trust me, it comes yeah, in yeah, handy. Yeah, 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 you trust me. I'm, I, I, I swear to you. So I'm going, the day is not going to be done without me having memorized how to say, please don't kill the chicken. <laughs> please don't kill the chicken. <laughs> oh, man. So. I'm going to let you get back with your, your day's starting. My day's uh, getting to the point yep. where I'm going to switch from coffee over to wine. And, yep, uh, and I really appreciate your, uh, your time and your conversation. And again, that, this is, this is amazing. Adria, thank you again, again, and again. Yep. And uh, I'm going to. Thank you learn... for, for recognizing my photography and, and seeing my work for so long, you know, that always just, you know, you just never know that. And then you're like, Oh, Oh, gosh somebody actually saw what i was doing so yeah well i'm hoping that again there's going to be more people seeing your work and, and recognizing not only that the work by itself it doesn't matter what it was shot on it, that's just an aside which makes it even more interesting but the work itself is beautiful so Thank you. yeah i got I, yeah I, again there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of good and bad work again there's, there's a lot to sort through so it's nice when you can can find someone consistently doing something and that you're again, Everybody connects and there's my favorite expression, which there's better, there's nicer ways to say it, but I prefer the way I learned it. There's an ass for every seat. And, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and I, I love that. I mean, that makes the world is the world's not perfect, but again, it makes it closer to it when you recognize that you don't have to try to, uh, for something and there's something out there for you. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so, and, and uh, yeah, I will my this next glass of wine I will pretend is a mojito and I'll dedicate it to you. 
Perfect. All right. Well, it was really fun and I appreciate it. And thanks for, um, thanks for wanting to interview me and thanks for spending the time. I really enjoyed it. Thanks. I'm going to have this edited and there's not much editing. I'm, this is mostly free flowing. I, I have no idea where it's going to get cut and then it'll, it'll, it'll drop on Wednesday. Okay, cool. Cool. Sounds All right. good. All right. Have a great day. Yeah. Thanks. Au revoir. Bon nuit. <laughs> so, au revoir. Bonne journée. <laughs> All right. Au revoir. Bye. Good night. Thank you. My pleasure. Fine. There we go.